Well, to look at the Republican presidential contenders left after Sarah Palin's decision, I'm joined by Tom Switzer. He's a research associate at the University of Sydney's US Studies Centre. Now, Tom Switzer, why do you think Sarah Palin is not running? Well, I think she recognises, Kim, that uh, she instinctively doesn't have what it takes to win over the Republican base. Uh, she's left it very late. She hasn't got the fundraising at her disposal. And the fact of the matter is the Tea Party vote has been pretty much captured uh, by three main candidates on the right of the Republican Party. Uh, the Texas Governor Rick Perry, uh, the, um, the Minnesota Congresswoman Michelle Buckman, and Herman Cain, the businessman. Isn't it fair to say, though, that she really was the darling of the Conservative mm. Tea Party movement, but she had struggled to win broader support? The polling wasn't looking terribly good for her. Did she just simply see that she didn't have enough widespread support to make a credible run? Yes, all the available opinion polling about Republican candidates suggested she was about fifth, sixth, maybe even seventh, so that's absolutely clear. But I think there's also a sense that if she did indeed run for the White House, uh, it would be a very unconventional path. Uh, not since World War II, um, only since World War II, there have only been three real candidates or presidents who have come and uh, not directly from elected office. And they were real heavyweights, so Dwight Eisenhower in the 1950s, Richard Nixon in the late 1960s, and Ronald Reagan in the early 80s. And of course, they all had a lot behind them. I mean, Eisenhower was a five star general who saved uh, Europe from Nazism. Richard Nixon was a former vice president with a lot of policy gravitas. And Richard Nixon was a very, uh, Ronald Reagan was a very successful governor of a two term governor of uh, California. Palin, on the other hand, had really only been a small-town mayor. She'd been uh, a governor of a fairly small state, an inconsequential state in Alaska. She'd only had served two and a half terms of a four-year term. Uh, and the other thing, too, is that she was a failed vice presidential candidate. I think she, she probably, um, although she probably appealed to the base of the Republican Party and helped John McCain, she probably alienated a lot of independents, and I think that scared a lot of people. Which is always crucial. Absolutely. Well, Sarah Palin now says that she is going to help coordinate strategies to assist in replacing Barack Obama. So does she now fancy herself as a bit of a, a kingmaker within the Republican Party? Yeah, in many respects, I think she is uh, seen widely as a patron saint of a lot of these Tea Party Republicans that have become very popular in the course of the last two to three years. Pretty much since President Obama has been in the Oval Office, we've seen these right Republicans um, who are very keen on lowering the size of government and uh, are fairly socially conservative. And I think in many respects she represents uh, the voice of them. Whom she supports is a big question. Um, certainly uh, the governor of Texas is a, a very popular candidate, but he is bleeding right now, and it's largely because of his liberal positions on immigration, uh, a position I suspect that Sarah Palin would not support. So do you think that she will actually eventually throw her support behind one of the declared candidates, or do you think she will sit on the, on the sidelines right until the end, until she can get behind the person that she thinks is going to win so she can be seen to be on the right yeah, side? Yeah, good point, Kim. I think that's exactly right. I think she's just going to sit on the sidelines and just give support and keep bagging away President Obama's record and there's plenty of ideological red meat in there for the base of the party as well as middle America. I mean President Obama is not looking good at the moment. The unemployment rate's very high, uh, his approval ratings are very low and he's even losing support on his base. So I think that's pretty much the game plan for, for Sarah Palin. So day. it's quite possible that the Republican Party might even be able to use or would, or, or would it like to allow Sarah Palin to become like an attack dog on Barack Obama. Hmm. She's got nothing to lose um, by just going at him all the time. The other Republican candidates can just you know, find their place, uh, ch choose their moment sort of thing. Well, the other Republican candidates are more focused on each other than President Obama. I mean, especially uh, uh, Mitt Romney. He's, he's most uh, mainly focusing on uh, uh, the governor of Texas, Rick Perry, and of well, course, uh, so is uh, Michelle Buckman. He, he's the marked man at this stage. And it's interesting, isn't it? Because Mitt Romney is seen as the front runner, yet, mm. yet people don't seem to, you know, their hearts aren't sort of on fire mm. about the prospect of his candidacy. You know, he made a failed run mm. last time. Do you think that he is the front runner? You mentioned Rick Perry has been bleeding support? Yeah, the problem, I think it's fair to say that um, the, the, the Mitt Romney, the former governor of Massachusetts, is the front runner. He, he certainly looks the most presidential. Mm -hmm. uh, he has a very good business background. Um, he has a bit of policy gravitas. The problem, of course, for um, uh, Romney is that he's seen as a bit of a chameleon. You know, he had liberal positions when he was a governor of Massachusetts, most notably on health care. Uh, Not really the candidate to rally the Republican that's base. That's exactly to... right. And there's always a risk, of course, that if uh, if uh, someone like Romney does not give enough ideological red meat to his base, there is a risk. I, I downplayed at this stage, but there is a risk of a third party candidate in a general election who would run as a Tea Party a centre right, right wing candidate uh, that would splinter the Republican vote. Rick Perry, the Texas governor, is another one that we've just spoken about. And, you know, when just
just before he entered the race, he was seen as a great hope. You know, mm. Tea Party conser conservatives loved him. I mean, but, but is the Republican Party really ready for another Texas governor <laughs> to take up the, the mantle and, and, and try to defeat a president? Well, look, he has struggled in the debates. Uh, he's participated mm. in about three debates uh, in the last month, and uh, by all accounts, he has failed to really land a punch on Romney. But this issue of immigration, ironically, is hurting him. I say ironically because Perry has, at first glance, all the great conservative credentials you would need to yep. be the nominee. He's quite tough on national security. He's fiscally conservative. He's culturally and socially quite conservative. Uh, but on immigration, uh, particularly the issue of illegal immigration, um, he's seen as very liberal and he's been interpreted to being very condescending when he, when he said that his opponents lacked a heart for not supporting a more liberal policy on uh, Mexican immigration. Uh, so that is now starting to hurt him and uh, it remains to be seen whether he can bounce back from that. So finally, while it's a long way out yet, but we always like to you know, have a go at these sorts of things, what are the chances of one of those Republican contenders defeating a sitting president? I think the prospects are very good. Um, as I said, not since uh, uh, the 1940s has uh, uh, a president been re-elected when the unemployment rate is 7.2% or, or higher. The unemployment rate is 9.1%. But it's also rare for a president to be turfed out after just one term as well. That's true, although George H.W. Bush, uh, George H. W. Bush uh, president from 1989 to 1992, despite the fact he presided over the Gulf War, he got turfed out after one term, so did Jimmy Carter. So, look, it's quite conceivable. And as I said, all the available evidence indicates that he is going to struggle to win next year. It'll all keep us intrigued for a while yet. Yeah, Tom Switzer, thank you very much. Thank you.